Hi, this is John Keegan, Niska Rep at I-88 and Utica Rome Speedway, and welcome everybody to watching Inside Northeast Racing. And thanks for coming along with us this week as we've got a whole bunch of different things to show you, including the action from the Utica Rome Speedway, a little bit of a tempt the things to come here, taking a look out at Utica Rome, the brand new Richie Evans Memorial flag blowing in the breeze there. Also the opener at the Glen Ridge Park where they flipped for some great action up at the Ridge on Friday night. All kinds of things to look at as we take a look here. We got some great full fendered racing down at Orange County Fair Speedway. A little more wild action shot there. And of course, last week we welcomed Gene Cole's Utica Rome Speedway to our family of sponsors. The Action Track of the East is what they call the Utica Rome Speedway, Sunday night place to be. And this week for the Race of Champions Tour Sportsman Touring Race, a big field of sportsmen were on hand out at the Utica Rome Speedway on Sunday evening. As you can see, the track coming up smooth and fast as it was on opening night and a big field of sportsmen joined a full program of racing out at Utica Rome this past Sunday night. When they brought him down to the green, Steve Way would set the pace with the number 27 car. As you can see, a big field of ROC Sportsman cars on hand, making their way down here under green. Didn't take long for mayhem, and last Sunday's winner, Claude Hutchings Jr., went around down between turns one and two on the initial go-round. They gathered him backed up and brought it back to green, and a little more mayhem here as the evening goes on. But it uh, took a little while before they settled it down. Here's Way bringing him back down to green once again. Steve Way with the number 27. Mashing the gas off of turn number four and leading the way around. And this time it sticks. We're good for green. And Way will lead him down off of turn number two. That's A.J. Philbeck with the A1 car working up on the outside of Steve Way as they go down into turn number three. Way right down on the inside, tucked to the low line. Philbeck rim riding off of turn number four and getting a great run off of turn number four and taking the number one spot away. So it was A.J. Philbeck going to the number one spot with the number one car. Back in second spot was the 27 of Way. Another caution, bunched them back up. A double file restart with Philbeck setting the pace from the inside this time. As they get ready to come down to the green, Philbeck fires from down on the inside. Power to the ground first off the corner and brings them back down to lead the way as the field goes green once again here in the ROC Sportsman main event. Cars fanning out across the track. You can see two, three, almost four lanes across the track there between turns one and two. Some great racing action. This was week number two of the 2013 season, this special event here. There's the 22 of Danny Tyler running with the Sportsman. Uh, Tyler splits his time up, runs the ROC Sportsman Tour in a 22 car, also an accomplished modified pilot. As we go back to green here, back underway, down into turn number one, and way was the key word there, as Steve Way will work the inside lane as they come down off of turn number four. They come down the back stretch here off of two, with Jeremy Vunk working up on the outside with Way on the inside, and Steve Way trying to get the power to the ground on the inside. He will do so, the bite off the corner, he brings them back to the line first. Steve Way and Jeremy Vunk would duke it out up on the front here. Vunk gets back up by him on the outside. As Vunk works the outside, Way on the inside, side by side, they come off the corner, and back down the back stretch they go, this time Way with the advantage. Here's Jeremy Vunk taking a look upstairs. You'll send it into the high side, way up on the outside, looking at a three-way run here as they come down off the corner, making their way down on the front stretch. Now slower traffic down low. Here's Way working his way down off the corner, and Steve Way continues to set the pace up on the front. Steve Way, the dominant factor 
on Sunday night. He would go to victory lane. Steve Way got the win over Matt Janzik, Jeremy Vunk, Claude Hutchings, and Chris Mackey. All right, we're here with uh, Jackie Brown. It's first time back uh, since 19, uh, since three years now, uh, starting out this year in the uh, modified division. Jackie, how does it feel to be back on opening night at Aquarius Speedway? It feels pretty good. I, I love racing this racetrack. It's a fun place to race. It gets a little tight once in a while. A lot of fast drivers here, a lot of competitive drivers, and uh, they like to hold up you know, as much room as they can. So uh, it'll be fun. It'll be exciting. It always is. And the goal tonight is just to finish try to get the car going straight and see what happens. Now, uh, what could the, the modified class, you have opens and you have big blocks and small blocks. What are you running tonight? Uh, we have a dirt legal small block. It's probably not the right thing to have here tonight because the track looks really good. But uh, we're hoping mid-season when it starts to slick over, we'll have something for them, you know, and by then maybe we'll have the bugs worked out out of me and the car, you know. It's been a while since I've been here. Uh, we, we ran pretty fair last year in the King of the Catskills. I would have liked to finish better, but um, give us a couple weeks, I think we'll be all right. What's the difference between a small block and a big block on a slick track here? Is it more advantage to have a small block or a big block? Uh, definitely advantage to have a small block. You're not going to spin the wheels as fast. you got less nose weight. You can go deeper in the corner without picking up a problem. Um, yeah, it's a small block's just a better deal here for me anyway. Some guys like a big block. Danny always went good in a big block. But for me, this this is the right combination. Are you going to be here all season long, or is this the open night, or are you running for the championship, or any, any other big tracks this year? We're not going to run for points. We're going to come here and try to win races, and, and if we don't, then we're going to work on the car and try to get it to go faster. But we'll be here all year. Uh, we're the tire dealer for this season. Jack's used race car parts and more. Trailer right next to mine. Uh, large variety of used racing parts, and the tires are for sale for the racetrack. Now let's talk about sponsors. Uh, who do you got sponsors in your car this year to help you out? Uh, yeah, there ain't a whole lot of sponsors. Uh, we do it basically ourselves. We have uh, a couple small sponsors. Precision helps us a little. Higg's a great deal. You know, he helps us out with the cars. But mainly it's it's my money. Whatever I make working in the shop or whatever we make on the side, this pays for the race car. It's tough by us trying to find people to, to give you money for sponsors. The economy isn't what it used to be, you know. Yeah, and I uh, just want to wish you good luck and have a successful season. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the interview. I'm Sean Hart. Thanks for watching Inside Northeast Racing with Jackie Brown. Thanks, Sean. And we'll go to your Friday night home down at the Accord Speedway where it was the 2013 opener this past Friday night. Here the Mighty Modifieds take to the track. Tommy Meyer in the 33 and a third would bring him down to the first green flag of the 2013 season. Outside of him was the number 11 of Danny Creedon. Here Creedon going to take the early lead. There's Billy Van Edmugen with the number 10 car, the 6X of Jackie Brown, who you met just a few moments ago. Going to get him back in even rows of two here, getting ready to go back to the green, back in row three. It was the defending champion Andy Bacchetti and uh, many-time champion Rich Ricky Jr. back there starting side-by-side. Side. Here's the wild child going down low on the 6X of Jackie Brown. A little bit of contact down there at the Ulster County Bullring as they make their way down off turn four. Jackie Brown being ushered down to the low line there. Lost a number of positions. Tyler Boniface working up on the outside with the 69 car there, the green machine, as they come down through turn three and four. Always some great side-by-side -side racing down at Accord. Yellow coming out here once again to set up another restart as the 16 of Richard Smith goes around. Back to green we go as the field comes down into turn number one. Working up on the outside, it is the 33 and a third of Meyer working outside of the number 11 of Danny Creedon. Creedon going back to the number one spot. Here's Meyer trying to come from the outside to the inside. Great crossover move there. They go side by side down through turn one and now off two. It's back in Creedon's hand. They continue to race side by side here. There's another good shot of the Boniface car. Tyler Boniface in the green machine. Little rooster tail thrown up there by the 33 and a third as now Andy Bacchetti steps to the outside and Bacchetti about ready to let his force be reckoned with as he works into third spot but that was very short-lived as something going away on the 34 car and the defending champion Andy Bacchetti would show as a DNF for opening night. 
Back to green flag racing we go, and this time it's the six of Jackie Brown leading the way down into turn number one. The 11 of Danny Creedon there with him. Another caution, and this will bunch him back up again as they come down off of turn number four. Brown will get the jump off turn number four out ahead as they go to turn number one, but up there on the high side, the 11 of Creedon continuing to try and get a run. This time he'll take the momentum up to the high side through turn three and four, leaving that inside open as they come down. But Jackie Brown, strong to the challenge here this past Friday night. Jackie Brown with the 6X car, going to come down to see the checkers, the first to see checkers. Jackie Brown gets the win, followed by Danny Creedon. Danny Tyler would finish third, Tommy Meyer fourth, and Rich Ricky Jr. rounds out your top five. Now to the great race place. We go to Albany Saratoga Speedway for their opener on Friday night. Another season opener for one of our Friday night tracks, Albany Saratoga. Modified action sees the 16 of A.J. Romano take the early lead. The 14 machine there. Piloted by Australian campaigner Peter Britton. Britton going to be a regular at Albany Saratoga on Friday nights. And in only his third outing at the Albany Saratoga Speedway, a very impressive run. As here he battles with the all-time winningest driver at the Speedway and the defending champion, the 20 of Brett Hearn. Hearn now back to second. He's got his hands full there with A.J. Romano. And right off his right flank, we find the 1J of Stuart Friesen. Tough night for one of the racing Ronka brothers, Don Ronka, in the Fairways of Half Moon number 7 car, going off on the business end of the Toma Tire Wrecker, and he'll go back to the pits. We'll go back to racing. This time it's Britton on the inside, Hearn on the outside as they come off turn four. Peter Britton stepping out to a quick start here as they get down off turn number four. The Jersey Jet taken to the high side here, but Peter Britton got all kinds of bite in that race car and in the racetrack. Here's Hearn down to the inside, making the move by. He'll go to the outside, and now with free sailing up on the high side, Brett Hearn will take that number one position away and start to put distance between himself and Peter Britton. They worked their way off a of turn number two down the back stretch, about a car length separate, and Britton doing everything he can to try and run down your leader Hearn as they continue to battle. That's Ronnie Johnson back there in the Palmer Service Center 76A working outside the 3D car of Matt DiLorenzo. DiLorenzo there with the Recovery Sports Grill sponsored entry down low. These two drivers battle each and every Saturday night. Well, you know they do on Fridays as well. Some great side-by-side -side racing there. Here's the Jake Spraker used cars. One J car down low. Stuart Friesen working the inside of Peter Britton. That would be the race for second, as you saw the tail end of Brett Hearn's number 20 car there. But a great battle ensued here for the second position. But up front, it was all the Jersey Jet. The 20 of Brett Hearn coming home, picking up the opening night win for his seventh time overall. Stuart Friesen would come home second. Peter Britton would finish third. Ronnie Johnson fourth. And Matt DiLorenzo would round out your top five. Next stop, the Glen Ridge Motorsports Park, where another Friday night opener. Three tracks opening up this past Friday night here in modified action. They worked their way down here under green flag conditions. Craig Hansen out in front. Hansen, a past champion up at the Glen Ridge Motorsports Park, showing that he has uh, not lost his form up on the hill here at Glen Ridge. Hansen out in front. The battle back behind him. Some great racing back through the pack as they worked their way down here. Got him bunched up after a caution. Hansen going to bring the field down. Elmo Reckner back there with the number 17 car, working to the inside of Jimmy Becker's number 9. Down the front stretch here, and now working their way down the back chute up into turn number 3. Your leader, Hansen, with a comfortable margin, separating himself from Elmo Reckner, Jimmy Becker riding back there in third spot. The 85 car, that is Bobby Varon behind the wheel. That's Varon's new Friday night ride. He and Jimmy Becker make contact down there in turn number four, and Varon will pull away in third. Becker got shuffled back a bit here as they come down here off of turn number two, ready to go back to another restart. And this time, Reckner right there on hot on the heels of the 20 of Craig Hansen. Hansen, your leader. Reckner rides second. Reckner trying to close in here off of turn number two. Looks like he might have had something for Craig Hansen, the second generation driver out of Tribes Hill. But at the checkers, it was Hansen the winner over Elmo Reckner in second, Bobby Varon in third, Jimmy Becker was fourth, and Richie Price 
would round out your top five. That's at Glen Ridge Motorsports Park on Friday night. Back down to the Accord Speedway where it was sportsman action. The sportsman also on the card on Friday evening down there, a weekly division. Here's the green flag for the first of the starts on the sportsman feature event. Up on the front, the number 12 of David Cohn. A strong run here in the early going. There's two cars together up in between turns one and two. Bunch them back up. Going to bring them back around to go green. Green flag back out. Cone with the number 12 would lead the way down into turn number one. Got great side-by-side -side racing back behind him. Tyler Dipple's number one car. Dipple's been making a lot of noise up here in the upstate stretches of the dirt track wars here in the last couple of weeks. Yellow out once again. We get him going once again. The 831 of Jimmy Wells now out in front and flexing his muscles. The number one of Dipple working up on the outside of the 98 of Kevin Ward. That's Kevin Ward, former Lebanon Valley regular down there to the inside. Of course, Ward, a longtime regular between both Lebanon Valley and Orange County Fair Speedway. But here, Kevin Ward works the number 98 down to the inside of David Cohn. They come off a of turn number four. Cohn with the advantage. Tyler Dipple, he'll sweep the outside of the track down here in turn number one. Keep the momentum up, and you can see what direction Dipple's going. He's heading towards the front. The 98 award goes up the banking. Here's a good shot of Dipple taking the long way around up here between turn three and four while David Cohn continues to hold the advantage, trying to protect the inside and take that lane away from Kevin Ward. Well, that left the outside open for Tyler Dipple, and Dipple quickly working up on the top. We got yellow once again. Well, Dipple found something that he liked, and he rode that right to victory lane. Tyler Dipple picked up the win over Kevin Ward with Dave Cohn finishing third, Anthony Perego fourth, and Mike Barrett rounding out your top five in Accord Sportsman action Friday night. Now to the Fonda Speedway, the CRSA Sprint Cars. As they come down to the green, Tyler Chartrand's number 12 gets turned around and collects up Mike Kaiser. Kaiser going up and over a lot of damage on the Kaiser 29 machine so that was the end of Kaiser's night and uh, also Chartrand's as they come back to green racing down here into turn number one got some side-by-side -side racing back through the pack up front they start to break into single file fashion here's the 07 of Danny Varen working down to the inside Dan Cuomo owned 07 car as they worked their way down off of turn number four up on the front, the 72 of Jeremy Quick, fast here this evening as they work their way down. Keep an eye on the orange number 7 of Corey Sparks. Sparks, always fast when the sprint cars come to the Capital Region, whether it's in 305 or 360 action. Here's Danny Varon back aboard the 07, the 7 of Sparks trying to close on him. Varon, a past winner at Fonda in the CRSA Sprint Cars and looking to do it again here tonight as Danny Varon in the 07 car slicing and dicing his way through slower traffic coming up now running down Jeremy Quick. Quick one's your leader here's Varon right there off the backside as they go back to green here comes Corey Sparks working the outside Varon on the inside Sparks on the outside and they go wheel to wheel down here through turn three and four and Varon using that inside lane to get a run here and now go to work on the 72 with Jeremy Quick. He'll make the pass, he'll make it stick as Quick tries to come back to him. Sparks tries to run him down, but when the checkers fly, it's going to be Danny Varon picking up another CRSA sprint car win at the Fonda Speedway. There's the checkers. Varon gets the win. Jeremy Quick comes home second. Corey Sparks will finish third. Brett Jaycox finished fourth. And Parker Evans rounded out your top five CRSA sprint cars from Fonda Speedway this past Saturday night. I'm Mike Mellon for Inside Northeast Racing, standing here with last week's feature winner here at the Utica Rome Speedway, Ronnie Johnson. Ronnie, first off, congratulations. Car was hooked up last week, and this seems to be a trend here at Utica Rome because it seems like at the end of last season, you also found something. Yeah, the last half of the year, I couldn't win a race here, but we had uh, a handful of seconds uh, to everybody. It just seemed like uh, 
I gave one away to, and I didn't give it away, but Pat Ward passed me on the last lap one night. It was a heartbreaker, but we kind of found a setup here that was working pretty good, and uh, we put it in his car for last week, and uh, we come here with a new JPM big block, and it was really good. Last week, you raced against Billy Decker. Now, I know the stories about Billy Decker. Now, Billy Decker practically grew up at your house when he first started racing. Does it make it more special when you can go out there and battle with Decker for a win like that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I was a 10-year-old kid uh, when Billy started his racing career at my father's race shop, and uh, I've always idolized and looked up to Billy, so just to be out there and race with him for a win, we've been able to race a few times, you know, quite a few times together, but never duke it out for a win like that, and uh, man, when I seen him go by me there, I just uh, gave it my all, and because uh, I knew to, to be able to beat Billy, you'd have to give it 110%, and uh, it was fun. He's a good, clean racer, and uh, I talked to him during the week on the telephone, and uh, we had some good times talking about it. You know, last week you mentioned Ed Kaiser and Victory Lane, you know, uh, Carol's father. How important was it for you, and, and how meaningful was it for you to be able to go out and win that feature and dedicate it to him? Oh, it, it, was, it was a lot. I mean, Carol's dad, Ed, he really uh, supported our race team, and he would uh, help out with just all kinds of things, whether it was money, uh, buying a part, helping rebuild an engine, or just uh, there for moral support. And to lose him the way we did last week, uh, it was real special for Carol and Elton especially. Fonda Speedway, what's it going to take to beat Stuart Friesen down there? I didn't sleep home last night thinking about it. Uh, it's funny, just uh, he reminds me of my father at Fonda when I was a kid. Uh, in one aspect, uh, you know, I don't like him being there because he's kind of raining on our parade. But you have to admire the way he can get around Fonda Speedway and drive that racetrack. Uh, he's a heck of a shoe, and uh, he's certainly doing well there this year. Uh, hopefully we can get our act together and give him a run for his money before it's over. Yeah, you know, I know you always talk about your dad, how nobody can be as good as your father at Fonda. And, uh, you know, but you, you're finally starting to come into your own here. You know, you're, you're winning races at other racetracks as you travel around. You got your Fonda Speedway title. I mean, you're starting to make your own legacy. How does that feel? Well... Uh, it feels good, I mean, but as you're doing it, I guess you don't realize it because it's, uh, it's happening as you're doing it. Uh, don't get me wrong, I had a, a good foundation to start with with my father, but, you know, we try to go to the racetrack and, and keep our nose clean and uh, treat people well and uh, kind of the things my father's done for 40 years, uh, we learn from that and we just try to build our race team off of that. Well, Ronnie, best of luck to you tonight and thanks a lot. Inside Northeast Racing, my name's Mike Mallet. Thanks, Mike. We're going to take a trip out to your Sunday night home now, the Utica Rome Speedway, where it was time to go racing modified style. The 2013 modified week number two as they worked their way down off of turn number four here for the initial green. Chad Homan and Dale Plank brought the field down to green. Chad Homan in the 91, Plank in the 77X as they worked their way down the backstretch now. Here's the 99 car of Ryan Phelps with Matt Fink's number 15. Look at that three wide back there just behind them as they come down off of turn number four. Down into turn number one, Holman would be your early leader. Here's Fink coming up on him as they work their way down off turn two. That's the 88 of Alan Johnson. Alan Johnson in the 88J car. As Johnson working up on the outside of Holman here, now he would take over the number one position. Holman on the inside, Johnson on the outside. Look how wide Johnson came off of turn number four, looking for bite up on the outside of the racetrack. As you can see, the track starting to shine up a little bit, starting to slicken up. Johnson working as high as he could to try and find what bite there was on the outside. Here's Dale Plank working the outside of Ryan Phelps. as Phelps down on the inside. Got a couple of car mishap here. The number four of Jim Mahaney and the opening night winner, Ronnie Johnson, come together, ending their nights down in turn number four. Going back to green, and green flag is back in the air. This time it's Burley working off the extreme outside. Todd Burley in the 89. As they come down here through turns one and two, they fan out. And again, like in the sportsman race, three and four lanes wide as they work down off the corner. Down the back stretch, here's Pat Ward working down to the inside of the number 99 car of Ryan Phelps. And Phelps just getting faster and faster as the evening went on. They come down here under green flag conditions. Here's Alan Johnson out front. Alan, unchallenged here for quite a part of the distance here in this event. As Alan Johnson working up on the front. Side-by-side -side race here is the 99. 
of Phelps going to work on Larry White, White on the outside, Phelps working on the inside. As we said, Phelps would continue to creep his way towards the front. Here's Dale Plank riding in the runner-up position. Plank starting to apply pressure, going by the 79 of Rocky Warner. Rocky Warner in his rookie season here in the Modifieds. But when the track slickened up, the 99 of Phelps started to make his way to the front. Here's the 88 of Alan Johnson continuing to show the way. Phelps looking up on the outside. Dale Plank looking to the inside. Allen going to try and take the inside lane away here on Plank. And the outside left wide open for Ryan Phelps. And Ryan Phelps would make a three-wide pass down to the line here at the white flag. And Ryan Phelps nosing out in front of Dale Plank on the final go-round. Phelps would lead the way off of turn number two. Plank trying to get to him. Plank down on the inside lane trying to stick it low down through three and four. But here on the final corner, the final lap, Ryan Phelps would inch out ahead and go on to pick up the win. Phelps got the win. Dale Plank would finish second. Stuart Friesen would finish third. Alan Johnson fourth. Here's and Larry Kerwin. White fifth. Here at Utica Road for the drive of the Napa Auto Park 99. Let's give a nice hand, race fans. For the rocket, Ryan Phelps. They're running back there in the third spot, watching those two battle for the lead. They kept leaving that top lane open. With one to go, you made it work. Yeah, uh, you know, this is a place that, you know, we have some good runs once in a while, but we never seem to be able to get a handle on it uh, consistently. Um, to be able to get a win here uh, is just awesome, especially this earlier in the year, or early in the year. Uh, we, we weren't that good last week. I mean, we got the flat tire and all, but, you know, it wasn't anything to write home about. And, Now it's time for the NISCA Weekly Winners, sponsored by the New York State Stock Car Association. Don't forget the NISCA Golf Outing coming up on Thursday, May 16th. Cost is $100 per person. That includes your golf cart, lunch at the turn, and dinner, all included for that $100 fee. It's one of NISCA's fundraisers. Be sure to support the New York State Stock Car Association as they support us. Here's the NISCA winners. Tyler Dipple from Accord, George Dickelman, Emerson Cargain Jr., Tyler Boniface, Joe... Scappa to the Fonda Speedway we go where it was Reuben Kennedy, Nick Stone, Danny Varon, Cody Blue, go to Glen Ridge Raceway, Ben Riggie, Joe Thorne, Rob Van Arnhem, Stanley Wetmore, John Walsh, And Greg Pesolano at Glen Ridge, the Orange County Fair Speedway. It was Anthony Perego, Christian Ramsey, Emerson Cargain Sr., the Albany Saratoga Speedway. It was Matt Mosier, Rob Yetman, Connor Cleveland, Brandon Uline, and Derek McGrew. Daniel Sanchez kicked it off at Lebanon Valley. John Filarecki, also a winner. Jason Harrington. Jay Corbin. Dan Cody. And Tyler Dipple. Those are your weekly winners. On behalf of the New York State Stock Car Association, thanks to NISCA for their support here of our program. Hi, I'm Rick Lucia, promoter of Fonda Speedway. Thank you for watching Inside Northeast Racing. And talking about Fonda Speedway, we go to the Track of Champions for their modified main event. Modified feature event, taking the green down at the Fonda Speedway. As we go green, Eric Nelson aboard the 85 car, bringing him down to the green along with the Legal Legal, Kenny McGuire. Underway here, you see Dave Lape, the number 22, the red 22 of Lape, entering his 50th season of racing. Tonight wouldn't be one of those take-home notes as he and Pep Karate come together off of turn number four. Lape whacking the wall there off turn number four, and that would end the veteran from Canada Harry's night. Going back to green, there is Pep Karate with the 21P car. He and A.J. Romano race side-by-side side there under green. Up on the front of the field, it's Alton Palmer with the Palmer Service Center number 76A car showing the way as he goes by the 85 of Nelson. 
Here is the 76 of Palmer out in front working his way around the track of champions as he has done so many times over his career. The 50J of Craig Bowler here working up on the outside opens the inside lane and enter the defending champion. The Canadian sensation Stuart Friesen going to work. He was a winner a week ago here at the Fonda Speedway and Friesen starts to close in on the 76A of Palmer now using the inside lane trying to gather an advantage off of turn number two. Palmer on the outside, Friesen on the inside, and here comes Friesen going to fulfill that void down to the inside and Mr. Freeze would go to the number one position dealing out in Palmer back to second. Stuart Friesen down off of turn number four here across the line. Out front, looking for his second consecutive win with Alton Palmer in chase. As they come off of turn number two, he'll stretch the advantage and now work his way up through slower traffic as they come around. Stuart Friesen in quest of his second checkered flag. When he gets the checkered flag, that's his second in a row. Stuart Friesen the winner. Alton Palmer finishes second. Danny Varon third. Jeremy Wilder was fourth. And Craig Hansen would round out your top five at Fonda Saturday night. Hey, Lugnut. <laughs> What's up there, buddy? Well, it's time to go back racing down at the Orange County Fair Speedway. Modified feature time down on the hard clay. As we get ready to go green, the 53 of Rick Hill and the number 7 of Donnie Wilson. Bring them down to green. They go into turn number one. Hang on, Donnie. Backed her into the wall here on the first go around. Short night for Donnie Wilson. Here's another mishap. Looks like taking up four cars, including Bobby Barron's number 66 car. Going back to green as they come down. Green flag flies. Back underway here at Orange County Fair Speedway on Saturday night down in Middletown. The 21 of Gary Edwards Jr., the 21 junior car that is of Edwards. Here we go, side by side by side. They work there. Hey, there's Jackie Brown working once again down at Middletown on Saturday night. The 21 car down low. That is Clinton Mills as they come down off the corner. Mills using an inside lane. The number one of Tim Hindley. Remember last week, Hindley had such a good run there with the number one car. He's already shown he's going to be a force to be reckoned with here in 2013 as he battles back there with Jackie Brown with the number one car. The defending champion, Jerry Higby, up on the front. The Higfab number 97 car. Really starting to make his presence known here in this event, Higby. Working his way up to the front and showing his muscle. Championship form, Jerry Higby in control. As they come down, checkers fly. Jerry Higby gets the win. Chris Whitehead would finish second. Billy Van Endwigen finished third. Steve Dodd was fourth. And Clinton Mills would round out your top five at Middleton. That original jingle that happened down there, I says, oh my God, this could be my lucky break. Am I really going to be second on this restart? And I said, all I got to do is get a good restart, beat him into one. I think I'm going to be okay. And that's what happened. But, uh... I just, I'm so proud of our company, of our uh, uh, Higby Racing Team, everybody. You know, we, we built all three of these cars that are in victory lane tonight. So uh, this is one of my proudest moments in racing. We'd like to thank Jack Shoes Race Car Parts and More, the New York State Stock Car Association, and Gene Cole's Utica Rome Speedway for their support. Here is Inside Northeast Racing, of course, Bobco Racing Video and Northeast Racing videos instrumental in the production of this event. You've been watching Inside Northeast Racing, sponsored by Utica Rome Speedway, New York State Stock Car Association, and Jack Hughes Race Car Parts and more. Inside Northeast Racing is a Northeast Racing videos production, your 24-7 racing connection on the World Wide Web. Until next week, this is Dan Martin saying see ya.